They are nice, aren't they, Alexandra? These two mounds. It was one. My son and I have been making this mound. And then he started breaking this mound. And then I taught him to use a wagon, a small wagon, to bring grass to the mound. And that made him love the mound again. Now it's something he requests. He wants to make a mound. And so he started making a small one right here, right next to the larger mound, just on his own. Um, I still have to give him the grass. He still wants to do it with me. But it is something he has built, this smaller mound. And that's a part of our story. Would you be my ears again, Alexandra? I, I need to tell you a story once more. Uh, I need to tell someone a story once more. To, on, on, I need someone to be the ears of Little Red so that he might come back to us. So I don't have my computer in front of me. I'm going to try to remember what, what it is we have done and how we brought violence to this world. I don't want to. I don't want it to be our responsibility. I don't want it to be us who started the bloodshed. I. I want. I want to blame it on the little ones, the little germs. I don't know about germs. I don't know what they look like. But one day we weren't sick, and then we became sick. And I. I want to say that that is when the violence began that the violence that was done to us by the world, by, by the, the gods, by the viruses, by whatever you want to call it, that is what made us mean. But then it was we who made the choice. We started the, the abuse of Wolf Corbett. Abuse that's continued in this very last term. We didn't, we didn't perpetrate violence on him this last term. We didn't lay siege to his town. It was the possessive man, Jonathan Bolton. But how did he learn to behave that way? Was it we who taught him? Wolf Corbett said we're like the Vikings. We're the conquerors from boats. That sounds both boring and awful. But maybe that's what we are. Attention, organics. You have ruled over the bots for far too long. Stand down in the name of central intelligence, and we shall rule a just society. That's right. The trap has been sprung. I did a, a small video this morning, which was a little convoluted, so I'm going to kind of redo, letting everyone know the positions and letting you, uh, the viewer who are not participating in this game, the positions of all the players. I'm not sure if I even mentioned this, but there are people who are playing these real people now um, for the purpose of this game. Not not Pablo Origins. Um, I'm still just running that. But um, so Ka, Melky, uh, Runt, and um, Snugbug all have players playing them, and they they've been we've been communicating, uh, inputting, outputting, inputting. Um, what everyone's going to do. So just let you know the starting position and what's going on right now. So um, DJ Double J, she's the token non-player character. She's the Ensign. Uh, her name is Ensign X-Ray, the crossing guard lady. Um, she's right here. And there's a robot here that's going to come try and kill her. Uh, Snugbug's right here in the cockpit. He's our pilot, the replacement for Cowboy. And there's a robot right here that wants to kill him and then cat as in cat is up here um, along with milky right here now they're the they're the fighty guys on the on the the group of the group but they're way up here and all the robots are down there and so this robot's probably going to try and slow them down while the others get killed um, and then we have uh, lieutenant Corp corpulent runt over here and she has to deal with this robot right there, as well as finding information because here the ship is heading right now, and I've actually moved it one space already. We've done the ship movement towards the planet Crystallia. 
Um, here are a bunch of UREF ships, that's the, the government forces. They're all in disarray because they're their ships are going crazy. Um, and then over here is a crystal ship, this fellow here. He's the crystal ship. I didn't really have anything better to be the crystal ship. I could have used one of these, but that would be confusing because it's also a crystal planet. So real quick, what's going on? Um, these robots that are going to ki now be trying to kill the people, they were decorating the ship with crystals, um, which is something that all the other ships in the galaxy have already had done to them. So our heroes were the last because they were on vacation while Cat, as in Cat, had her dinner party. And so now the robots just finished up um, decorating the spaceship with crystals and um, then that announcement came on the speaker as well as some other communications but you can look at the forum if you want those details. It's on Battle Stations Bot Wars on BoardGameGeek.com. It's on the Battle Stations Bot Wars page. Uh, so that's what's going on here. Now uh, people have told me kind of what they want to do. It's difficult. This is a difficult position for me because um, the, a lot of people were very specific with what they want to do. Um, and I was kind of just going to play and have them do some of the deductive stuff. But I, I like what people are doing. So I'm going to... It's, it's always a difficult balance, I think, when uh, game mastering how much control to give the people. I was I was going for a less control sort of game just to kind of keep things moving because I don't want to be, I like this game, but I don't want to be playing it forever. So I was, I realized I was getting to the kind of information portion. So this, this planet Crystallia, um, if, if the, a scan is done on that from the science bay, players have two options on what they're going to do with that scan. They can either ask a yes or no question immediately about the bot wars and just anything about the bot wars, anything they can think of. I will try to answer with the best of my ability, um, to the best of my ability. The other thing they can do is they can use it to gather intel. And there's actually, um, if they get a certain amount of intel in this mission, I think it's three, they get the overwhelming success, which um, our crew so far has been very good at getting. This is a little bit harder of a mission than we've done before, however. Um, their main goal right now is just to escape. Um, but currently their ship is going towards Crystallia and it's actually accelerating um, towards Crystallia, which makes its out of control level go up one. I guess I'm going to put that there. All right, so it's accelerating towards Crystallia. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so, so that intel they then can use to ask more general questions that don't have to be yes or no. Um, in between missions they can do that. And they can also do something um, for determining after this mission they're going to have choices, mission choices, and with those choices they can decide which mission the crystal ship goes to. So that's the other thing they can do with that scan. So uh, Lieutenant Corpulent Runt has a very important role, especially in this mission when they're in the same place as Crystallia. Um, she can choose to scan. Unfortunately, she has to deal with these robots here. And that was a version of our story, but what, what has everyone else's story been? Uh, he should be standing proud, USR local. I apologize, I've had him laying down since he was a slave. He's long since stopped becoming a slave. He's actually set foot in Africa, the first person or first people to do so um, since, since Wolf and I. Uh, and we started out there, so he went across the water. He also made some deals with um, the Hobbit Lord here, Mimim. Uh, they, they're they trading this hex. This is all kind of informal um, for... Oh, there's a tin... Oh, right here, this hex right here. So Mimim's going to get this, t this hex, and um, USR Local gets that hex. He's spreading out quite a lot. Um, he also got his first public card, so things are really looking up for him. He doesn't score on that, but still, it's nice to have. He's going to have a larger hand size, and he used that to hold on to the Dopp Granaries, so he, he has a little bit more flexibility with the cards he keeps. It's nice for him to keep that out of circulation, because then other people can't use it. Otherwise, every time Dobb Granaries gets played, it just goes around and around until someone plays it. Um, big news is the Possessive Man, as I alluded to, outside by the mounds. He took over that um, that metropolis from Wolf Corbett, which is rough on him. So we're seeing this kind of um, the stuffy nose face and taunt is sort of dominating the globe right now. I mean, they they all are in a higher era. And speaking of that, I gotta get that down. They're all in a higher era, and they have a geographical advantage. They're really 
starting to crowd us um, the barbarians out. So we did our storyteller. Once again, the people would like to attempt to domesticate the rice millet, and so that's what we're going to do right now. Rice millet, right there. Merker, Snugbug is alone in there with a bot, but there's another one in the opposite direction. I suggest we rush them both. I'll go help Snugbug, you get the other. Agreed? I'm on it! Bots should know better than to mess with bugs. I need help over here. I've got my hands full controlling the ship. I'm going to go in a little more detail than I normally would just because there are people playing these these fellows and I think they would like to know what exactly they're doing. So here, here um, Junior Lieutenant Merker, he ran over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm using the new rules where you don't move diagonally but you get two added to your movement rate for those of you. There are a few people who are playing who actually know how to play the game so <laughs> they should know that. I don't know that I know all the new rules. Um, I, I tend to just go by what's in my book and this is the 1.0 rules uh, but I like that rule with the 1.1 because diagonal movement with square um, square grids doesn't really work out well distance wise so I'm glad they changed it. So both Marines move their full movement allotment um, now, Kaz and Kat, she, uh, Lieutenant Capazoid, she had to actually draw a weapon because she only has one hand, so she couldn't have one on there. I'm ruling that um, Merker had a blast pistol on him because uh, he, has, he has three hands, so I figure why not have a gun in one since he's a Marine. Makes sense. Um, Capazoid couldn't have because she was prepared to operate this cannon. She didn't. I'm playing no one really expected that the robots were going to invade. So what are the others doing? Well, I know what this fellow is going to do. He is going to try to slow the ship down because it is rapidly increasing in speed, heading right towards Crystallia. And we got nuts, right? Once again, that's very sad for us, very frustrating. We had a 66% chance of being successful, a 50% chance of getting the better result, which is the the um, footprint increase. We keep rolling a two, which ends up being a three, which is nuts. Snugbug was successful. The The speed did go down one. That's going to add one to the out of control level, however. Um, so basically the ship the ship's kind of doing... I don't know if you've ever been in a car where someone did that, when they're kind of like changing gears rapidly. So that's kind of what's going on right now. Um, things are getting crazy. Now, uh, a note here, this is an interesting thing about Snugbug. Snugbug could have tried to slow it down more. Um, it would have been harder, though. He went for the surer bet, which is kind of a Snugbug style. Um, so he went with a straight difficulty of 8. Um, 2d6 plus 3 is what it would have been. Had to get a 9 or better, essentially. Um, and he did that fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Corpulent Runt is standing her ground. She's going on overwatch. She's ready to fire if anything comes her way. Uh, incidentally, she, we were talking about hands earlier. She has an infinite number of hands, essentially. I don't think she literally does. but So she can just hold everything in her hands while she does stuff. Um, so she's ready to shoot if something comes her way. Um, I always have to remember her name. X-Ray, the crossing guard lady. She pumped the engines over here, just up one. So that's going to add one to the helm, I believe. Uh, yeah, the, the helm, because the helm actually needs it. Um, and then she moved over here. Luckily, we rolled another two on our chaos roll, and thus did not go into chaos. So Flush was able to move northward and bonk this cube here, which... Um, allowed us to savvy and raid um, this card from the possessive man, Jonathan Bolton. Uh, we had a couple of other choices as to who we could bonk. Um, all of them were USR local. Um, neither card was better than the other. We have a history of violence on that space, so we went there instead. And the bots don't waste any time. This one headed right up here, right at Corpulent Run. She was ready, though. She's going to shoot. She's got to get an 8 or better. Like 5 or better. Got a pretty easy shot. Oh, that's rough. So that's Snake Eyes. That might be an automatic miss. I'll have to check on that. Otherwise, she can use luck to try and make it better. Okay, she is allowed to reroll. It would be an automatic failure if I would left it at that. So she's going to use luck because her life's in danger. Uh, so she needs to get a four or higher on this die, I believe. Yeah. 
She got a two. So now she's going to use luck on this one. And there she got it. Damn it, she needs to get a five or a six or she's just in trouble. She got a two and a four. I think she's, she's burning her luck. Um, this doesn't really matter. Bots are different than other characters. You have to do this kind of weird way of doing it. There she goes. She broke this bot down. It's not dead yet, but it's broken. Um, so now this one's going to move towards her. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think six is bot. Yeah. One, two, three, four. And how dumb are they? They I guess they're pretty murderous. Five. Six. And I'll just go and like hack at her, I guess. Alright, so you can see what the bots are doing. They're just using their full movement to head to charge the person right now. Um they have knives, they're brandishing knives, and they're doubling up, so trying to take out the, the kind of more scientific people uh, to kind of gut the workings of the ship and then hopefully be able to mess with these other guys. Um, so this one isn't going to be able to attack until next turn. Neither are these because they, they basically they, they use one action to do, they do use their standard movement and then another action to do another movement. And that's where we're going to leave it, Alexandra. Uh, we had a sort of mixed turn in Origins, how we became human. We, we still, yet again, did not get to domesticate the millet. And then we even moved from that space, so that was silly. But Flush was getting antsy. He didn't want to just sit there and be a farmer. Flush is a man of action. Speaking of men of action, we stopped it after just one phase. We stopped battle stations, bot wars. Um, I think to kind of give... I, I chose to do that just because it's, it's exciting to start and uh, give time for things to sink in. I do hope to go quicker in the future for that game in particular. Um, but I thought I'd let some people catch up on... Uh, what they what they're doing and kind of get a feel for the game before um, I thrust too much on them. Uh, what else did I want to say? I think that's about it for now, Alexandra. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing today. I'm about out of time though too. That was what I wanted to say. I'm about out of time, so that's another good reason to stop right now. Da.